Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CNG Podcast. My name is Tommy Terrio, and I am here with... The one and only Eli Burns, Grimace Shake Survivor, may I tell you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for coming on again, Eli. We always appreciate it. Thank you. Um, And without further ado, we're going to talk about um, the All-Star Game, which just finished up yesterday, um, with the NL defeating the AL 3-2. And we are also going to look forward to the second half of the MLB season and the different parts and pieces that um, the different predictions that we have storylines to watch out for teams to watch out for players to watch out for those kinds of things. So um, let's start. Um, let's start first with a uh, all-star weekend um, home run derby. I don't think anyone was surprised that Vlad won. Yeah. I had a, one of my dad's friends over and he predicted Vlad to win before the Derby even started. Yeah. He was right. Yeah. I mean, Vlad, you know, sat out the past couple of them. Um, but if you if you all remember 2019, he was, uh, you know, on a different planet with some of his performances. So, yeah. Pretty darn good, I would say. Um, um, another guy that gave an incredible showing, um, Julio Rodriguez, most in a single round in the first round of it. So that was impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Adley Rutschman. Oh yeah. That um, dude's going to be a monster. All I'm saying is top, um, he's, um, top five player in baseball in three years. Totally agree. Um, and hitting, hitting home runs in the home run derby from both sides of the plate is incredible. Yeah. I don't think I've ever, I've, I don't know if you have, but I've never seen that myself. Neither have I. That was that was special. So shout out shout out to him. Um, the other big one, uh, the All Star Game. So I guess we should kind of break that down. Yeah, I missed a bit of it because I had to get some dinner for myself. Uh, I see. Um, so the game started out with two incredible catches from Adolis Garcia and Randy Rosarena. Yeah. Um, that was spectacular. Garrett Cole probably had the easiest inning of his career with that. You know, when you got that kind of outfield help, you know, maybe this is a sign that the Yankees could get some outfield help because, you know, Aaron Judge has decided to, you know, He's, just, you know, Aaron Judge is not back. So still waiting on that. Yeah. Um, Yandy Diaz hit a home run, um, giving the AL a 1-0 uh, one lead. Um, and um, J.D. Martinez was um, – J.D. Martinez was singled in. Um, giving the uh, tie in the game, um, and then uh oh, who was it? I don't remember who it was that got the second run. But then the AL put it up two one. We thought Lourdes Goriel got a home. We thought he got a home run. I don't know if you saw that part, but Lourdes Goriel of the Arizona Diamondbacks hits up hits what is like thought to be a home run. He trots around the bases, does the celebration, all this, that, and the other, thinking, "Oh boy, I tied it up. You know, here we go. Let's go NL." And they do they do some replay and you can't see where the ball is, but they say nope, we're gonna we're decided that's not. So it ended up being called back. And then my boy, the guy who I didn't believe in. Yeah, I thought of you. I was like, man, this is why I need to have confidence in my team. Even though they've done nothing for me, I need to have confidence in my team because no matter what, you never know what's gonna happen. And Elias Diaz at, of the Colorado Rockies, the only Rocky All Star, wins the NL MVP off of a game winning home run in the uh in the top of the eighth. You can't make you can't write this these kinds of scripts any better. Holy smokes! Let me tell you. Only what. thing that would have made it better if Julio Rodriguez hit a home run in the bottom of the ninth to win it. A Julio Rodriguez walk off home run would have been storybook. <laughs> that would have been amazing. I think they. I think that stadium might have come unglued. It, it there there would have been some uh there would have been some rioting in the streets of Seattle. That, um, perhaps the fans would people. have stormed the field. That would be something. <laughs> the first ever one of the first ever pro sporting events to have the fans storm the field. Normally, yeah. it's just reserved for college, but you know, every now and again, with a very special occasion, you never know. Yeah, that'd be special. Um, but yeah, that'd be, I can't even imagine that now that I say that. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was a great game. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed what I saw too. Um, 
I I maintain the assertion that the NL or the MLB All Star Game is the best All Star Game out of any of them. Oh yeah, the NFL Pro Bowl is pretty much dead. The NBA All Star Game is yeah. Too much there's just no me. defense. The NHL is more of a tournament than a single game. Yeah. And um, the MLS is weird because they have their All Stars play against Arsenal, which is weird. I don't get it. Um, no, like the thing, the thing about it, right, is it feels like a normal game, just at a just feels like a normal game played at a higher level. Yeah, like every other game doesn't, every other All Star game doesn't feel that way. This one feels like all these guys are coming together and they're just having a good time. Yeah, that's how it should be. Um, do we know where it is yet next year? It's going to be in Arlington. That'll be good. Yeah. That'll and be really good. 2025 is down to four options. What are, what are the four options? Wrigley Field, Camden Yards, Rogers Center. Uh, what's the one at Atlanta? Forgot. The Truest. One. Truest. I would love it in Toronto. Toronto, I think the thing about it, right, is... Canada has ha- Canada is such a big baseball country, it feels like. Yeah. And like the support that they have for their Blue Jays is unmatched. Um, and I think they would I think it would be very good to give them the to give them an all-star game, which I personally think they really deserve. Yeah. I mean Wrigley hasn't had it since ninety. Yeah. Baltimore um, hasn't had it since ninety three. And uh, um Atlanta would be great as well. All I'm saying is we would get some absurd records broken if it's in Wrigley with the home run derby. Yeah. There would be some records broken with how small that field is. Sure, Justin could tell us more. Yeah, I think Justin would be willing to break down the park dimensions and what we need to watch out for there. But, um, yeah, good times all around. Um, Philly will host in 2026 in case you're interested. Okay. I like that. Were you at the when I was in Colorado in twenty one? Uh no. Um I was still back in Washington at that um at that point. So mm. uh, um also All Star Game tickets are so expensive. Yeah, my dad looked at some and he couldn't do it. Yeah, shout out um J- um Justin was there and he had, um there will be some uh, CNT content coming out across the uh, social medias um from his some from some of his content at the uh at the all-star game festivities, but that's a lot of money. I wasn't, I was not, uh, you know, in the market of spending. So, um, one thing that I do want to say is we need to bring back players wearing their own team's jerseys at the all-star game. Yeah. I wasn't a big fan of the all-star game uniforms this year. I like the all-star game uniforms, but I like, I like it when it feels more individual and they're all like, they're all able to wear their own uniforms. I like that. I get where you're coming from. Heck, let me take this a step farther. Once every team gets a City Connect uniform, everybody wears their own City Connect uniform. That'd be cool. I'll I'll take that. I would like that. I don't know. There um besides the Pittsburgh one, there's none that I really, really hate. Uh coming from a Red Sox fan, I don't really like theirs. Yeah, the blue and yellow is weird. The cut isn't Red Sox. Yeah. The Eagles had something similar in the NFL yeah. where they had a blue and yellow uniform, but that sucked. Yeah. So I guess the only question is, is there's a couple of teams that I just don't think it would really work for. I think the Yan- like there's no way to make the Yankees work. I don't feel at least. Yeah. Because the Yankees have had the same design their entire history as a team. Yeah. The Yankees uniform design has never been different, so there's not really much to like revert back to. And there's not, I mean, like you could draw some inspiration from like New York as a city. But it's but just kind of Mets a it's probably kind of weird. the Mets probably do that as well. Yeah. The Mets have a little bit more. There's just like some more uniqueness that you could do with the Mets, I feel like. But still, it's no, just a kind of a weird dilemma. Another team that's similar with a City Connect, the Dodgers. They don't really have one. Mm-hmm. Um that being said, there were some teams that like I didn't, you know, I didn't think they would get one or I didn't think they would look that good. But like the Reds, those my, those are my favorite city connects, by the way, are the Reds. I no bias, like the Mariners ones, but I also like the Rangers as well. Yeah, I don't like the Mariners ones. The, the old pilots bow back. 
yeah, it just doesn't, it feels weird. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have loved if they gone back to more like the, um, like mid 90s. Mid 90s. So, like, you know, like the Griffey Jr., like the, you know, like the um, Griffey Jr. catch in front of his father, you know, like those gray jerseys that they wore. Yeah. I want, I want to do something like closer to that. That was what I was kind of, I guess that was what I had in, envisioned in my mind. Yeah. All right. So, now that we've gotten halfway through the year, we've gotten to the All Star break. We got the rest of July, August, September, and then we got October postseason baseball. Maybe a few World Series games in November this year. Yikes. I don't like that. Not a big fan of that one. Neither do um, I. But I want to talk about um, some teams to watch out for in this um, upcoming um, upcoming season, some buyers and sellers of the trade deadline, that kind of thing. I think we should go through that. Sound good to you? Sounds good to me. Um, the first division that I want to start out in is I want to honestly start out with the AL Central. Do because it. it's the it's the two horse race of mediocrity. Yeah. Where you have the Guardians who are 45 and 45 and the Twins who are 45 and 46. Both of whom have honest chances to do something, but like still they're for, near, you know. Like Hot. it's only one only one of those teams is getting in. That's the problem. Hot take. Tigers stay in contention for that division until late September. I could see it. They're only five and a half back. Like, you don't need to do much to be in contention for that division. Yeah. As long as you're the Royals. The Royals stink. But, like, all the other teams have a realistic shot. The only, I mean, the White Sox are the farthest back out besides the Royals at eight games back, so. They they do have hope. (laughs) Yeah, there's some possibilities there. Yeah. Um, Interestingly, it's a three-horse race in the NL West. Arizona, San Fran, LA. Yeah. Um, the Padres stink and the Rockies really stink. So, you know, shout out. You went on that whole rant last. Yeah, I think we can. I think, you know, I think they remember that well enough. Um, does the uh, superstardom of Ellie De La Cruz continue? That's another question that needs to be asked because if it does, the Reds are, the Reds are, you know, going to win the division, I think, pretty handedly. Yeah. Pretty handily, I think the Reds win that division. Um, the Braves are gonna be fine. The Braves can just coast, really. Yeah. Um, the Marlins are probably gonna be a wild card team, just you know. Yeah. Phillies could make it interesting as well. Do we really think that though? I think they could possibly snag a third wild card. Yeah, I mean, my problem. Um, I think it's gonna be like I think it's gonna be San Fran and Philly competing for that last spot. So, yeah. so you're gonna okay. So here's how like I see it, right? You have the um you have the Braves, the winner of the NL Central, which whether it's the Reds, the Brewers, the Cubs, whatever, you're gonna have that. That's the only team for the NL Central is gonna make it. Agreed? Agreed. Um, so you have the Braves, the Reds, and then you have the winner of the NL West, whoever that may be, right? Yeah. So you know for sure that you have one NL wildcard spot going to the second place team in the NL West. We feel pretty good about that one. Yeah. Whether that's the Diamondbacks, the Dodgers, or the Giants, like the second place team in that division is going to get one. Oh yeah. And then after that, I feel like those are that's when the other two are, you know, come up pretty, you know, for pretty close contention there. Yeah. So that's I, I like that one. That one's interesting. The Mets could also get back into the race if they get hot. Do we really think the Mets are gonna get hot though? It's like I say, I say that with the utmost honesty. Unfortunately, like it just doesn't feel like they're a cohesive unit right now. Yeah. Plus, with the fact that it feels like they're gonna get like they're they're gonna be constantly injury plagued. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't feel that great about them as a team. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What other um? What other what other players or what other players or teams that do you want to look at? The entire AL East. Yes, agreed. That 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 division is just so interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have a Rays team that started up on fire, but is somewhat playing only fifty fifty. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're only two games ahead of the Orioles now. Yeah, an Oriole team that has broken all expectations. I think. Yeah, I think we knew they were going to be good, but I don't think we knew they were going to be this good. A Blue Jays team that is, eh. Yeah, I don't know. I worry because, like, Vlad – so Vlad caught fire coming into the All-Star break. 
Yeah. Um, but you just wonder, like, there's always the superstition of the home run derby that like really hurts people in the in the following half season. Um, the judge the Yankees. with the Yankees. When is Judge coming back? Like he said, he would be back sometime after the All Star break. But we do we still have an up? I don't think we still have any update on that. And a and a no name Red Sox team that, despite being in last, is only two back of a wild card spot. <laughs> That's the most impressive part to me. Yeah. We always find a way, Tommy. We always find a way. Yeah. Um. Yoshida for rookie of the year. There's really not any good. Uh, Josh Young. Hmm. I think Josh Young's going to win it, probably. Actually, is he still considered a rookie? I don't know. I don't know. I think he is. Yeah. But this division could go anywhere, really. Yeah, which I, I really like that a lot. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Whoever... Whoever finishes last, I think, will have a better record than the AL Central winner. Yeah, so the, so the current two favorites are Josh Young and then Masataka Yoshida and then Gunnar Henderson is it is um, tied with Yoshida for second best odds. Hmm. Yeah. Um, man, the A's stink. The A's do stink. They're already um, starting to move to – pointing the move to Vegas. Yeah. Um, I guess another one, that, another thing that needs to be mentioned is um the Luis Arias saga. Like, is he going to hit four hundred? No, no, probably not. But if he does, it'd be really cool. Yeah, he'd be MVP hands down if he hit four hundred. Is he though? With how good Ron Ronald Acuna? That's another guy that I want to talk about. Ronald Acuna has the potential to hit forty home runs and steal eighty bases. Wow. That would break records. Yeah. Um, Ronald Acuna is on Ronald Acuna is at plus one sixty four um to get to get a four to get forty forty. Mm. Those are really short odds. So oh, yeah. um I just don't I think I think he has MVP in the bag. Um Corbin Carroll is another one, a guy that Justin was harp uh, you remember that you were there. He was harping on the uh he was on the Corbin Carroll train at the beginning of the season saying he's going to be top seven MVP. And unfortunately, we made fun of him for it. If you remember well, that, we made fun of him for it. I think he's right. Yeah. Um, he's, he looks like he's going to be top three. I think it's me, Acuna, Arias, and Corbin Carroll in, one, in some permutation of that. By the way, Corbin Carroll um, is a slam dunk NL Rookie of the Year pick, by the way. Yeah. And also some dark horse NL. MVP picks, Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts, some past MVPs. Two guys that need to be mentioned, but for some reason aren't. I can't yeah. speak to why, but they aren't. Yeah. Um, and then a guy that I kind of want as a um, dark horse, um, dark horse NL Cy Young. One guy that I really like, actually. Yeah. It's gonna be look. It's gonna be a little bit weird. Let me pull up his um stats real quick. Um, you can kind of determine how you feel about this being like a dark horse uh Cy Young pick. But the guy that's kind of disappeared into like the background is Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. I'm gonna keep beating the drum. If Clayton Kershaw is an is an elite level player. Still is. Um, people are questioning, like, hey, does he still have it? Like the Dodgers resigned to a one year deal or one or two year deal in the offseason. Yeah. When there's like rumors of him going to Texas. Um and he was like, no, I'm staying, you know, I'm an LA guy. We're, you know, at this point, we're, you know, we're gonna hammer this home. And to his credit, he is killing it. So they just need to find a way to play better in the playoffs. That's all. Well, I mean, they won a World Series three years ago. Needn't we? But that was in a short season. You know, I've gotten over my grace with that. Here's my thing with it, right? Yeah. Everybody had the same number of games to play. Yeah. You have a point. Like everybody had the same amount of opportunity at like relative to everybody else. Every single team played 60 games to the point where they could have fared better in those 60 games plus the postseason 
to a point where they could have won, but they didn't, and the Dodgers won. Unfortunately, that's just how it rolls. Yeah. Like I feel slight, you know, like I feel the same way about the um like the NHL and the NBA that came back in like August, yeah. like July and August. Yeah. The thing is when the lightning the lightning won won back to back after the won it again in 2021 after they won yeah. the bubble in 2020. Uh, yeah, see the thing about that, I mean, like both both of those guys too, is it's the same thing where everybody got brought in where they had a chance to make the playoffs, right? Yes. And then they had a chance to win, but they didn't. So it becomes the thing of, all right, you were given the opportunity to do so, but you didn't, and thus we keep going with our lives. Yeah. I don't understand this Mickey Mouse ring, all the you know, all this like, oh, the Dodgers win doesn't count. It 100,000% does. The Dodgers were given the same amount of opportunities as every other team. I guess you're right. I get that it's a trendy thing to say. I get that it's, you know, like, oh, we don't, you know, we don't like the big bad, you know, be having a championship. But, you know, sometimes it's just how it yeah. rolls. I get it. Um, I have another team that I want to talk about, actually. To do so. Pittsburgh Pirates. Hmm. They've been interesting to watch this season. Because you have guys like Mitch Keller, David Bednar, and O'Neill Cruz, Cabrian Hayes, Brian Reynolds. Like, there is a lot of talent on this team. Yes. And it feels like they should be better than they are. They started out pretty well. But they should be better where they are. I mean, I think, I mean, I think you're, if you're the Pirates, you're pretty content. Like, this feels like growth from last year. I don't know if that's just me, but it feels like growth from last year. Yeah. So if you're, I mean, if you're sitting at, you know, like a slightly above 500 team next year, I think you're feeling good. Um, Honestly, by like May of next year, you're going to have Paul Skeens probably. The guy is so good. Yeah. By like May of next year, he's going to be back, which is going to be amazing. Um. I don't know. Like, do you agree though? Like, this team feels like it should, it like it should be better. I I think they have tap potential, but that's a. I think they're a year or two away. Yeah, until they really, you know, turn it on. Getters. Yeah. Um, and then there's a couple of teams that we need to check in that, like, in the bottom of the division: the Royals, Athletics, Nationals, Rockies. What do they need to do? Do you think? What's the game? I think they just maybe sell at the dead, maybe sell some of their top top players at the deadline in exchange for a for a couple prospects. In and, exchange for prospects and just slowly just continue to get younger. Yeah. I think Br- Chris Bryant should go personally. Chris Bryant should go. Um Bobby Witt, maybe. Awesome. Salvador Perez should go for sure. Yeah. Um I don't know. As much as I hate to say it because he just, you know, won the All-Star game for the NL. Elias Diaz's value has never been higher. Yeah. And he's 32. And by the time the Rockies, like, window of contention for this group of prospects rolls around, which is in, like, four years, he's going to be 36, 37, and he's not going to be at the same level of talent. And we have plenty of other great catching prospects with both – Drew Romo, oh, shoot, what's the other guy's name? I don't have it off my head. Point being is that there's a lot of value you could get for him right now. Like his value is the highest it's it'll ever be. Yeah. So I don't know. Unfortunately, I feel like El- trading Elias Diaz might just be the move. That being yeah. said, I love the guy and thank you for putting color putting you know putting some respect on Colorado's name. Shout out. Yeah. You know, I, I felt I feel like I needed that one. Uh huh. Um. Let's see. What are their teams? The Padres. What do the Padres need to do to turn this around? Uh, I don't know. What I mean, what's going on there? Are they just not playing well? Back hey, Juan Soto hitting like two fifty. Who? Juan Soto is hitting like two fifty. Well, maybe you need to. Demote Soto or trade him. That'd be fascinating if you if they traded him. Can you imagine? Again, 
Yeah, that would be that would cause a rift. There's some. I mean, who would you trade him to though? New York, the Yankees. Maybe. Honestly, I, I don't hate it. What? I don't hate it. Yeah. I could possibly see him maybe go into maybe the Mariners. It's a lot of value for the Mariners to give up. I mean, I love the idea of a Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez outfield, but like what value are you giving up, right? Yeah. I mean, let's just let's just walk through this, okay? Let's just just walk through a, tra- a potential trade um for for Juan Soto because that's all there's a lot of value going on there. Yeah. Let me see if I can pick up. Let me do this. One second. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do this on the uh, good old fashioned uh, trade simulator, baseball trade simulator website. How about this? Sound good to you? Okay, okay. okay. All right, we have the Padres, and we have the Mariners. All right. So first and foremost, majors. Outfield, we are trading Juan Soto to the Seattle Mariners. Okay, so let's see. What are some easy ones we can do just right off the bat here? Probably send them a pitcher, probably. Yeah, yeah. Let me send a, I'll send a pitcher to you guys. We'll say Emerson Hancock's part of the deal. That'll that'll go that one really fast. Um, Bryce Miller, part of the deal. Then let's get some fielders. I don't know. This just seems so just inconceivable to me. Yeah. yeah. It's just such a massive deal that, like... It would be so so one-sided. Yeah. And also, like, what's um, what's Juan Soto's contract look like either? Mm. Let me look. I got it. One second. Juan Soto is probably making a lot of money. Okay, Juan Soto, left fielder for the San Diego Padres. No, he's in arbitration next year. Arbitration this year, arbitration next year, and then he's a UFA. Mm. So what value are you giving? Like, what value are you going after for a year or, you know, you know, for two years of Juan Soto, right? Yeah. It's the same question as the Shohei Otani question. Yeah. Of what value can you get for half a year of Shohei Otani? Yeah. And like, who are like? It's pretty much just a rental at this point. <laughs> Yeah, like I think the only people that are w- are going to be willing to buy are a team like a LA or a, or a Yankees or and um maybe a Rangers. No, they're not going to trade in division. Maybe like the possibly maybe the Phillies. I don't know. I don't know. There just doesn't feel like a like a location where it's like they have the assets, the need, and like the contendership to where they could do it. It just doesn't feel like the, those three elements really meet in any one team. Yeah, because like the do- a lot of the Dodgers prospects are gone. Like maybe they trade them to the Dodgers, but even then, it doesn't feel right. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is to that question. If I you're the can't... Angels, you're if you're the Angels, you're looking to trade him because you know they're not going to bring him back, right? Yeah, I just can't see him going to, like, the Yankees or the Red Sox or something like that. Yeah, if you were to ask me, like, okay, if you were to ask me, let's say this is um, the day before opening day, right? Okay. So the day before opening day, if you were to come to me and say, Tommy, I want you to tell me right now, right here, right now, 
where is Shohei Otani going to be traded at the trade deadline? I would have said New York because I'd be working under the assumption that New York would be a top team in the division. But New York is eight games back. They're fighting for a wild card spot. Yankees or Mets. And Aaron Judge is sidelined. Well, that, yeah. I don't know. Aaron Judge, if, if, you know, say he gets straight to the Yankees, Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani is a scary duo. Oh, yeah. Plus, they have the money to bring him back. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I could see them pulling the trigger on that. That would be a nightmare. I'm only trading for him is if I feel like I can re-sign him. Do the Yankees have prospects, though? Yeah, Jason Domingos mm. will be one of the first guys to go. Um, there's some other guys in there that I know would be that I know they could deal and be fine. Yankees could also get Chris Bryan as well if they can't get Otani. Uh, they don't want him. Yeah, they really don't. I think there are other guys on the market that would probably be better. Um, let's see the top prospect for the Yankees. is Jason Dominguez ranked at 42 in the um top one in the MLB top 100. No. Um, yeah. And they also have Austin Wells at 81. He's a catcher. Which is a position of need to be fair. So you know. Never possible trade candidate. Nolan Arenado. That one is interesting. Like, how much value do you – I mean, like, what do you think of a team that, you know, hasn't been able to do anything yet, you know? Yeah. I like that. I actually like that a lot. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think – what do you think is the answer to that question? An Arenado trade? Yeah. Do you think that – do you think Arenado gets traded somewhere? I'd give it a 50-50 chance. That's fair. All right, what so what what team do you think would buy? I think there's a lot of teams actually that could buy him because I feel like isn't he? I think he's con, um he's in our contract for longer. I think. Yeah, what team could get? He's third base, right? Yes, Nolan Arnado is one of the best defending third basemen of all time. Shout out. Trying to think what teams could use a third baseman. Yeah, you have him under contract until 2027. Yeah, my first thought was the Astros, but they should be fine. Um, the only concern is, um, so say they were to trade him next year, it'd be 35, 32, 27, then 15. Like you don't love that much money on your, on your books, but I feel like you feel pretty good when it's a guy like Nolan Arenado. Yeah. Um, so let's go through this. Um, third baseman needy teams. Um, honestly, could the Orioles? That would be something. They have the prospects for it. Yeah. Well, let's go through what does the uh, Orioles starting lineup look like? Um, Orioles, their starting third baseman. It's not Gunnar Henderson. Gunnar Henderson's short. Um, Jordan Westberg. Oh, the Orioles could use Arenado, I'd say. You could also move Gunnar Henderson to second, take out Adam, take Adam Frazier out of the lineup and move Jordan Westberg to short and then put Nolan Arnato in there. And you figure they have top guys. Um, I mean, you're not gonna trade Jackson Holiday. I guess maybe not Arnato just because of all the like left side of the infield help that they have. Um let's see. Um another team, one second. Another team that could possibly use Arenado. Um, one second. I don't know. This is hard. I don't think I don't think the Red I think the Reds are still willing to sit on the guys they have. They're not ready to contend yet. And the Cardinals wouldn't trade them in the same to the same division. In the same division. Like the Reds still have, you know, Noel V. Marte, Edwin Arroyo. Um and some other guys in there that I think they feel good enough. Cam Collier as well in a couple of years. Um, where I think that they're not too worried about um, like trading for new talent um, yet. Um, all right. 
I got one, and I just want your just honest, instant reaction to this one. I want you to tell me what you think about... Let me make sure that it works position-wise. One second. What do you think about him going to the Arizona Diamondbacks? Oh, that would be spicy. Um, For a deal that would probably include Gabe Moreno. Probably include Gabe Moreno. Um, Let's see, who else are we looking at here? Most likely, um, Brandon Fott, um, which is a great last name, by the way. Legendary, top-tier last name. Um, and honestly, there's a high probability. You, you, I mean, you probably get either, you know, probably not add another, like, player or two to, from that list. Um, like, maybe, like, an Ivan Melendez, maybe. Oh, that, that would be a um, good I feel like that would make sense because I just don't. I don't think the um, Diamondbacks would be willing to trade either Jordan Lawler or Drew Jones. Yeah. By the way, two years, two three years from now, um, that that outfield is going to be Jordan Lawler, Drew Jones, and Corbin Carroll. That is a scary. That is scary, and you know you have you know some veteran leadership like Nolan Arenado to make that even better. Come on now. That team wins the World Series in the next five years. Yes, agreed. Um, I don't know. I think that could work. Am I crazy? No. Well, maybe. <laughs> no, that's true. I'm generally crazy, but still, I feel like that. I feel like there's possibility there. Okay. I think that could work somehow, some way. I feel like that could work. All right. Um, is there any other uh, teams or anything else that you want to mention? Not that I can think of. Um, let me see. Is there any other any other teams? Um, shout out to the Cubs for you know. I feel like you know they're keeping it pretty, pretty even here. Yeah. Um. What are the Astros going to do? Well. Like, I want your prediction for the rest of the season. Not not for the trade deadline, but just in general. What do you think the Astro, the rest of the Astros season is going to look like? I think they somewhat get a little hotter down the stretch, but lose to Texas for the division barely, and they get the second wild card. Yeah, that's, that would stand to reason. That would stand to reason. Um, they do not repeat, however. No. Which is weird. Ball like, from- the like team has got has only gotten better. It feels like, like in terms of like just pure talent on the team, yeah. Like it feels like they've just gotten better because they lost um, Justin Verlander, but Fr- Framber Valdez has ascended to a new level of being. Yeah. And also a question for you: Want to get your opinion? Is the cheating scandal for the Astros irrelevant now? Yeah. It's irrelevant in terms of like fans should you know stop booing all the time, right? Yeah. Um, but in terms of like their long term legacies, it's not irrelevant. It yeah. Like I'm in the unpopular minority when I say that I don't think that Barry Bonds belongs in the Hall of Fame. I don't think he does either. Because the the problem with Bonds is that it sends the met like say say we put Bonds in the Hall of Fame. Okay, let's just. Just for the sake of sakes, let's say we put um, Barry Bonds to the Hall of Fame. Okay. What message does that send to a kid who's growing up, who's you know growing up enjoying baseball? That sends a message that it's okay to cheat. We said we are taught throughout our entire childhood lives that it's not okay to cheat, whether it's in relationships or at games or anything else. You are no better of a person or a competitor or anything else if you cheat. Unfortunately, we have somehow rationalized in our head that because a player was otherworldly while they were cheating, it is it is somehow our responsibility to vindicate them and make them feel better about themselves, even though they cheated. If you cheat and you violate the rules of the game set in front of you, you do not belong to be recognized amongst the greats. Well said. Thank you. Um, I understand why people want Barry Bonds. Let me let me start. Let me let me end it with that. Is I understand. Why, like Barry Bonds, there's a whole series on or on TikTok of a guy just going through Barry Bonds stats that seem fake, 
Like, there's no way this is real, but it 100,000% is. Yeah. But if you just, if you cheat, I can't, like, I can't be here to say, oh, no, you did, you know, you're not, you weren't in the right. So you, I can't, you know, sit around here and say, okay, oh, no, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Like, as much fun as we had watching Maguire and Sosa, like me, not me personally, because I wasn't alive, but watching Maguire and Sosa absolutely mash home runs 700 feet, you know, out of stadiums. They weren't, they weren't playing by the same rules as everybody else. So, you know, they shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And by the way, that also applies to guys outside of um, the, the guys who are in the Hall of Fame currently. David Ortiz got bust, got busted for PEDs. The reason I think David Ortiz is a different example is that David Ortiz continued to help the game grow after he left. Yeah. Like, he's continued to be a baseball ambassador, and that's why I think he's in. But, like, you figure, once Barry Bonds left, he was gone, right? Yeah. Once McGuire left, he was gone. Once Sosa left, he was gone. Once Kinsenko left, gone. Gone, yeah. Um... The other Hall of Fame case, Shoeless Joe Jackson. He needs to get in. Agreed. Because he was the scapegoat for that 1919 Black Sox team. Yeah. <sighs> that was my Barry Bonds rant. I feel like I have to do this every week. Like, I feel like I always have to defend my position on the mount here. Which is really annoying because, like, I don't know. I feel like people don't realize what, like, the implications of Barry Bonds cheating and what that actually means. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think people truly appreciate just what he did, what, just how what he did was wrong. Oh, he's guilty, no doubt. Yes. Like, it's not fair to, you know, sit around here and ignore that. Excuse me. All righty. So, my dear friend, with that, I think we call it. We call it. We good. Yeah. All righty. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so 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 much for watching. We gr we appreciate it. Um, I don't know. This is one of the most fun times I have in my week. I look forward to this every week. So. So, uh, Eli. Again, thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Any other, uh, any last uh, comments you have to make about the All Star Game or the second half of the MLB season or anything else that you want to say? Just to say that I had, like, I think I had Guardians Padres in the World Series, and <laughs> that's laughable now. Yeah, that does that. Uh, yeah, I think I had. I don't remember what my World Series pick is. I think it's. We all point... had the Guardians out of the AL. I remember that. Yeah, what was I thinking? I was saying, all right, the guard, the Guardians could be like a top team in the AL, but they're barely winning. They're barely winning their division at five hundred. Oh my goodness, that was a bad look. Um, so embarrassing for me, but you know, shout out me, you know, uh, four months ago, who you know naively thought that that was going to be a thing. It wasn't, and I'm sad, but here we are. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you as always so so much for watching. We will see you next week. Peace.